the Nikon D3200 is a former entry-level camera. As of January 2024, it can be found pretty easily for less than $200. If you want to learn photography, the D3200 at the right price is a good value. I will cover requirements and costs for an SD card, battery, charger, and give some lens suggestions. At the end of the video, I'll give the camera an arbitrary and probably petty ranking. The lack of a flippy screen and using contrast detect autofocus make the camera a poor choice for video. If you want to shoot video, a similarly priced cell phone that is a few years old will probably be a better choice. That's why I will be ignoring the what are, in my opinion, lackluster video features. The camera was released in April of 2012 with a suggested retail price of $699.95, and that included the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. I like to use the eBay completed listings filter to check prices, completed items. This shows what listings have actually sold for, and you can scroll through them and get an idea of what people are actually paying. Uh, and this is a good proxy for prices you see other places. I think that the best you're probably going to be able to get is online anyways is about $150 for a complete kit. Those are going to be pretty rare to see and you're going to have to probably watch auctions for a week or two if you want to get a deal like that. But if you can get lower than that uh, in person or somewhere else that is a great value. And then one thing of note is that the auctions are probably going to make up some of the lowest prices and if you see like no battery or charger you're gonna have to know that that's like 15 20 dollars added on to the price to get later and then the batteries might not even be good if you're buying used ones due to the age of the camera and how they've been i will have affiliate links in the video description and on my website obviously those are there because i get money if you click through them and buy there will also be a link in the description to where you can download a PDF copy of the manual and have access to the firmware if you need to upgrade it on your. Ideally, you wanna get the camera with an SD card, battery, battery charger, and 18 to 55 millimeter lens with VR. That's vibration reduction, which is a form of optical image stabilization. Compatible batteries are the 1230 milliamp hour EN EL14A, or the 1,030 milliamp hour ENEL14 batteries. However, they are discontinued, so good luck finding a third-party battery with an accurately listed capacity. The Nikon MH24 is the official battery charger. I'd recommend going with a generic universal charger if you need to buy one. Keep in mind that you can't charge the camera via USB, if you want to know more, at some point I'll release a video on how to test battery capacity for less than $30, and there'll be a link in the description. The camera has a single SD card slot that is compatible with SD XD cards. If uh, you need to buy an SD card, go with any card that is 64 gigabytes or larger and is compatible with UHS-1. Yeah, you can use full frame lenses on the camera but that would also mean you probably have more room in the budget because they are more expensive than the uh, DX APS-C lenses. Another annoyance is that you're gonna have to check a chart for compatibility, and that is because the AFP lenses are not compatible with the camera. So that means depending on where you're buying from, you're going to have to pay real close attention to the lens abbreviations because people will make mistakes and list uh, AFP lenses as AFS lenses occasionally and they will not work on the camera. And again, links to all this stuff will be in the video description. So here is the kit lens and the only thing you want to look out for is it for it to have VR. And you can see prices are pretty inexpensive. The 55 to 200 millimeter is going to be the next most common lens. This was sold with the camera as part of a two lens bundle. So it would not be unexpected to see this sold along with the 18 to 55 and a camera and everything else you would need. And this is going to be better for telephoto stuff. So if you need to take pictures of things further away, if you want to do portraits, 
things like that for um, some of these prices when you get it down around $50 is just a phenomenal value. For low light, like indoors or just general photography, the 35 millimeter 1.8G is going to be the lens to get. And this lens is one you would want to use if you upgraded to a better DX body, like a 7000 series. Uh, there's a 40 millimeter macro lens. Can't go wrong with that. Some of these prices are just crazy. If you get it down below $150, good for you. The 10 to 24 millimeter is one of two wide angle zooms to choose from. It's pretty crazy how cheap some of these lenses go. The 12 to 24 is another wide angle lens option. And some of these prices are just incredible. This was a very expensive lens originally. And finally, the 10.5 millimeter fisheye. This is just great pricing for a fisheye lens. And again, this is a lens that if you were to upgrade to another APS-C or even full frame camera, this would be a lens that you would probably keep if you find uh, a need for a fisheye lens. With that said, the camera with a lens is just going to end up being too large to fit into a coat or a jacket pocket or to be easy to travel with. The other thing to keep in mind is that it does require a battery charger. You can't charge it via USB, which again just makes the camera bad for travel and carrying around in general because you have to have a bunch of extra stuff with it and the lenses are fairly large. All right, let's get into the arbitrary rankings. In terms of size and weight, I just think that the camera is too large for what you get and the need to have a battery charger really makes it not as appealing to travel with. The zoom lenses are larger than you would expect, so it's not gonna fit into a small bag or a medium-sized purse or anything like that. You're probably gonna end up where you need a specific bag for the camera. Uh, and so for that reason, I am going to give it a killed by cell phones ranking. In terms of what the camera is good for, I would say it's good for learning photography. Um, I don't really expect many people to use it longer than six months. It's basically either you don't have an interest in photography after that amount of time, so sell it and let someone else use it, or you do have an interest, in which case you're probably uh, at that point ready to upgrade, if that makes sense. So that's why it gets a rating of learning photography. Price to performance really depends on the price of the camera because I feel that around $300 you start getting significantly better value in terms of cameras that are available. So keep it under 200, well under around 150 and uh, then I think it's uh, a good value. That's why I will rate it as sellable. You want to be able to sell the camera in about six months and not be out a ton of money. In terms of desirability, I don't think that um, it's that desirable of a camera. Nikon sold a ton of them, hundreds of thousands if not millions of them. It's a very common camera and for the most part entry level DSLRs all feel very similar. You use one, you've basically used them all. There's not a lot of point to go through and try to use all of them. And that is why I have labeled it as entry level. In terms of the overall system for the camera, it should be good because uh, the F-mount has a lot of support. There's a ton of lenses for it, but the camera itself has compatibility issues. So it's just annoying to have to go through um, a chart, look up the manual to see if a lens is or is not going to be compatible. And then there's lots of things that are only partially compatible. And so I have given the camera the system rating of get effed. Nikon really should have done better on that. So that's it for this video. I will continue to do more cameras and after a while I think the comparisons will start to get a lot more interesting when I build up enough models to actually make comparisons to. So subscribe or whatever, there'll be more videos.